the Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought. I'm going to make it better. Stay tuned till the end of the video for a secret Warlord update and make sure you comment Titan when. Look, a real kit. That's right, I'm now a show for games. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of money. Let's never do this again. Let's take a look in here. The box is full of sprues and hey, some parchment for a wet palette maybe? Instructions, I guess. Okay, to build this you need the tools of the trade. Knife to scrape seams, surprisingly official citadel clippers, big clippers just in case, drill just in case, file, Tamiya extra extra thin aromatherapy edition model cement, ah, and a classic pewter dreadnought to watch over me and pass judgment. Let us begin. Yeah, I follow instructions. Ooh, this design is so basic and clean. If you don't have tidy and squared up marines, you might be a heretic. I bet my editor just said, like call. Hey, listen here, you little sh Hey, is that a mold line? Don't mind if I do. Scrape mold lines to avoid criticism in the comments and build. The cabin or whatever this main body thing was, was a bit wonky. So I crammed a piece in to keep it propped open while it dried. Later, I'll find out that this was unnecessary, but that's what I did and I have to live with that. You can delete some mold lines with model cement. This piece here props open the front of the cabin, but I didn't look ahead, so I didn't know, okay? Everything going together pretty nicely so far. Hey, why the long face? Is it that your interred brother will probably melt into a gloopy puddle after piloting one of these things? Thanks for nothing, Cole. Let's just try not to think about that. With the bodywork wrapping up, it was weapon time. I decided to go with the Burt Burt gun. This kit is a real mystery to me. Some parts are engineered perfectly and go together like a dream. And then you get a gap like this. That's a lot. Eh, we'll fix it in post with Milliput. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. These very interesting, overly complicated shoulders are apparently designed to be posable, but I had to file down the rotator cuff quite a bit to actually let them move. Yeah, it has a big grabber hand. Ever heard of it? So I've built this guy from the waist up and then the waist, but they don't need those. If this is going to be truly Primaris, it has to be floating for absolutely no reason. Since the kit only comes with primitive legs, I had to make my own hover apparatus. I got my definitely real friend to help me make this hover pad and blender. I have friends and this one did a favor for me just because they're cool like that and so am I. I did not hire a professional 3D artist to make this. Their portfolio isn't even featured in the video description. I've got, I've got real friends, okay? I epically photoshopped a no-leg dreadnought and then made a mock-up and blender of the various things that might help it float. It was easy and fast and definitely didn't take away from any type of Titan projects. I successfully imported the models into the slicer on the first try. But the animal is inside out. For unrelated reasons, I reset all the normals in blender and re-imported the models into the slicer and then any cubic sent me this printer to try. So I did try it and luckily for me, it works. After this flat part entered the mango soup, it was only two or three hours until I had this. Printing was super easy, even for a noob, so I guess if you're in a market for a resin printer, maybe check the description if you like these results. And if you want to print your own, I guess I'll put these files up on Patreon or something. Nothing says grimdark like orange mango hover pads. Oh, some parts are weirdly hollow, but that's just because I have no idea what I'm doing in the slicer. The prints themselves were flawless. Trim these dishonest hips, and then the various pads are attached to the sides already looking sweet look at the <laughs> look at the <laughs> look at these tiny butt cheeks let's replace them with a rocket housed in what would have been the dreadnought's thigh armor with the butt booster in place it's time to attach the hover crotch two smaller bits one to either side and then i want it painted black post prime it needs that real official ultramarines blue good news i have three bottles oh that one's gone bad that's bad too Gone bat. uh, maybe we can save this one. Get the mug. Okay, I make this paint passable and then dunk in the heck out of this armor. Once the blue coats are dry, it's metallic time and, uh, okay, look, no one's watching this channel expecting Space Marine paint tutorials, so I won't drag this out. Silver, gold, custom black wash, black. The classic plastic dreadnought base is my favorite, so I'll try to replicate that in big Primaris style. Got some tree bark bolstered with cork to make the raised rock chunks a famous narb skull. Hmm, I suppose now that I could have printed these for myself, but you really can't beat a narb original. Speaking of which, it's spackle time. 
Blend the rocks down to the base with a generous helping of the original pink sauce. Once dry, I scrape it with this scrapey tool and eyebrow brush. Using some super glue, I anchor these key sand zones before going insano style with more sand. Isopropyl spray, glue, isopropyl spray again. Time to post some cringe. Glue that post in as a support because I don't have anything transparent. Sorry. I paint that base with dry brushing and washes, sometimes gray, sometimes brown. You know how it goes. Dreadnought, assemble. Boop, plunk. Oh, I'm sorry, did we just out Primaris, the Primaris Dreadnought? Remember that these hover pads put even more strain on the Entombed Marine, so they turn into goop even faster than with the normal Redemptor. Darn you, Belisarius Call. Press like if you think Call is a heretic, but leave a comment if you think it's kind of neat to have an Eldari girlfriend. Meow. Hey, should I repulsorify something else? You know, this whole hover versus legs debate has reminded me that it's probably nearly Titan time. So I guess I'll see you in that epic build video.